So that would be that be Copenhagen quantum mechanics. If we talk about Everett, I think that the modern Everettians have uh, two kind of key um, a priori contribution uh, 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 principles or sets of principles. The first one is a real patterns view of ontology, which the, the sophisticated Everettians adopt, and that's a priori with respect to quantum mechanics, clearly. Um, and the other is, is decision theory, which they use to give an account of probability within the Everettian framework, and that's supposed to be a priori. If we talk about Bohm theory, constitutive principles would be that there are particles with trajectories, there's absolute space and time, there's deterministic causation. Talk about GRW, then what's a priori is position as a preferred basis, and uh, stochasticity, the fact that there's just randomness in, in nature. And if we talk, the, the, perhaps the best case for, for Michael's um, project would be the project that's happened most recently among, um, among quantum physicists, which attempted to provide rational <coughs> constructions of quantum mechanics. So here we can think of programs of quantum mechanics. <coughs> where the a priori stuff is, for example, that the structure of physics is a C-star algebra. And then you combine that with, with information theoretic principles, no signaling, no bit commitment, and uh, no cloning. They're all expressed at the level of information theory, and that's supposed to get the quantum mechanics. Or you can think about approaches like Lucy and Hardy's, where he writes down axioms of probability and gets the structure of Hilbert space out of those. Or you can think about um, the generalized probability framework to, um, to, qu to quantum information theory, where you know, they think in terms of, you know, there's, there's a system, um, there's a preparation procedure, there's a system, there's a measurement. And that's a kind of a priori structure which you look at things in terms of. Um, if you, I mean, Michael makes a very important point when he does mention, he does mention um, quantum mechanics and he, when he points out that the a priori elements, that the, the constitutive elements needn't be entrenched, and that's obviously the case with these quantum, uh, and you take quantum examples, there's no way that you could regard uh, fundamental randomness in nature as entrenched when, when the founders of quantum mechanics committed themselves to it. It wasn't entrenched, it was radical. Um, quantum field theory, I think, is another good example where you can say there's really a constitutive uh, framework. So, Minkowski space-time plus Lorentz invariance of um, fundamental quantities and Lorentz covariance of the fundamental equations, that's just imposed as a requirement, that's what you want. Quantization, the procedure of quantization, there's, there's, there's a recipe that you follow. You replace uh, quantities with operators. There's a standard procedure about how to do that. Um, the length scale cutoffs that are applied in effective quantum field theory, which is the only quantum field theory that has any empirical content, that's, um, they're coming from outside. So I don't know, I don't know if a priori is the right word here, right? but they're coming from outside the theory to give the theory empirical content. I think like they serve as the framework that gives the theory empirical content. Uh, and then uh, one more, uh, I think this is a really good example for Michael's case, it would be the connection that's made between irreducible representations of symmetry groups and particles. That seems like a kind of constitutive interpretive principle with, with respect to quantum field theory. And, and, and now turning to everything that's going, um, what, what are the, I mean, if we're interested, if you think it's a, if you, re, if you recast what we've done as an epistemological meta framework <coughs> instead of a metaphysics, and I don't really care about the terminology, right, um, then I would say principle, uh, the primacy of physics constraint. And that's kind of a priori, according to us, because we say that it's part of what <coughs> makes physics what it is, that it strives towards completeness as a regulative ideal, as, as Janine was explicating this morning. So, so it's not like we've discovered empirically that physics is complete, right? It's just as, as, as um, you know, avowed physicists will, physicalists will say, you know, if it turns out there's ectoplasm, then physics must describe ectoplasm, right? That there's nothing that's in principle off limits to physics. If, it, it, if something must be, must be incorporated to describe the world, then physics must treat of it. So physics is sort of analytically complete in the limit. Um, and the asymmetric relationship between physics and the rest of science, that, you know, in the special sciences you will not posit any mechanism that requires information to travel faster than light. Um, that's, that's, I don't know whether I want to put it a priori, but I would say it's constitutive of our, of our, our, our idea of what your kind of scientific naturalist worldview should be and how you understand 
the science is to be integrated. Next one, we modal structure. I was very happy that Janine kept happily using the term um, because so many people have said to me, what on earth do you mean by modal structure? And the only example I can give is an implicit definition. What science describes the causal stroke nomological structure of the world. Um, that the world has a modal structure is, one, is the second one of our kind of meta principles. The third one will be anti-individualism, where that just means not that there are no things, but don't, don't, don't think of things as fundamental in your ontology. Think of things as themselves emergent structures. Think of, um, in particular, say, particles and quantum field theory as emergent structures. The real patterns view of ontology, which we got from <coughs> Daniel Dennett, uh, that goes hand in hand with the, with the anti-individualism, because it gives you a positive story about where you get individuals, individuals from. And the generalized correspondence principle, which is, you know, again, um, what Michael alludes to, the idea that no matter what, the successful science of the future will not just reproduce the empirical predictions of past science, but will reproduce the underlying <coughs> theoretical structure uh, as a limiting case. And um, related to real patterns, I think, you know, crucial um, developments that we need to incorporate into our scientific, naturalistic worldview uh, for the 21st century um, are you know, part of the real patterns idea is a commitment to the use of information theory. The fact that we just say it makes sense to talk about physical systems, to discuss how they process information, um, what the information theoretic properties of the data they produce are. And here I think um, something that, that I think philosophers have, have failed to get to grips with and really need to get to grips with is complexity theory, where we, we understand interesting emergent structure uh, in, in information theoretic terms, that is, uh, as, as data that's, that's produced by systems which is um, between, whose information theoretic properties are best characterized as saying it's between uh, order and randomness, that, um, we, 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 we find ourselves dealing with a complex system when it outputs data which is neither completely periodic and ordered and symmetrical, but nor completely random either. And um, that, the, that the world comes uh, hierarchically organized into, uh, into different levels at which we can find real patterns and laws relating them, because you can't have a real pattern without laws. I mean, law, laws and Law-like law, law and causal regularities and real patterns are kind of two sides of the same coin because you, you don't, it doesn't make sense to talk about a real pattern that doesn't, um, that isn't the subject, that isn't, isn't, it isn't uh, described by any law or causal regularity, right? Because if it wasn't, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a real pattern. Um, that, that the world has that hierarchical organization um, is, is, an, is another one of those, um, Principles that we should just take on as as, um, as articulating our scientific naturalist as part of our articulation of the scientific naturalist worldview, um, even if we can't see you know exactly what the merry logical principle that turns simples into uh, you know holes is, the, the world just is like that. We can find a small number of variables that massively re reduce the number of degrees of freedom that we need to describe in order to get access to a rough and ready but pretty good um, law-like generalization at a, at a higher level than, than the fundamental physical. Okay, so that, so that was um, Michael. Um, Michael means everything was going.